Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Minix Neo USB Type-C dock. This is one of these devices that has a single USB-C connector on one side, but then you get a bunch of other stuff on the other side, including power delivery, HDMI out, and two USB 3 ports. But this one integrates storage as well. It's got a 240 gigabyte SSD built inside, and this might be ideal for devices that don't have that many ports, like an Android smartphone or an iPad or one of those MacBooks or a Surface Go. In fact, we're gonna test it with all of those things here in just a second to see what you can do with this, because I do like having the storage integrated. And of course, we'll take a look and see how fast that storage is. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So we're gonna kick things off here with my little MacBook 12 inch, uh, the now deceased little laptop from Apple. And this famously only had a single USB-C port for both power and data. Now I've got the MacBook's power adapter here coming into the power delivery slot. Now they didn't indicate how much power it can deliver through the USB-C port on it. I think it's probably going to be about 65 watts. A little earlier we plugged my MacBook Pro into it and you can see we were drawing about 52 watts when we were running that computer at full load. Uh, we have HDMI out here going to my video system and then I've plugged in my wireless Logitech dongle here for my keyboard and trackpad combo. Uh, the keyboard trackpad is plugged in and charging because the battery had died. And in a few minutes, we'll connect a second uh, storage device to the other USB port here. Uh, this package, by the way, costs about 100 bucks for the 240 gigabyte version. So not all that much more than one of those normal USB-C docks would cost you without storage. So let's plug this in real quick and see if we get video out. You heard that chime, which means that the laptop is charging. And sure enough, the HDMI output is working here and I'm able to uh, move some things around. Let me get the uh, keyboard switched on here and see if we're able to get uh, that working. So if I jump back here, you can see I am uh, moving the mouse around here. Let me get the mouse pointer down on the camera view there. So that's working just fine. So the keyboard here is working through that USB and everything appears to be working as advertised. Now what I wanna do first is just test the performance of the drive itself. So we're going to uh, select that Neo storage, which you'll see here on my finder. And this is the SSD that is built into the little Minix device here. So we're going to click that and open it. It shows up just like any other external drive would. And as you can see here, we're getting initially some pretty decent write performance on it, about 400 megabytes per second. Uh, this puts it on par with just about every other USB-based uh, solid-state portable drive I have looked at. Uh, we're not getting the super fast speeds you'd get out of a Gen 2 device, but uh, this is certainly more than adequate, as you can see here. Uh, the writes did take a little bit of a dip there, but it looks like they're catching up now, so there might be some write caching going on that might fill up with uh, frequent writes out to the disk. But overall here, it seems to be uh, performing quite well for something that's integrated inside of something else. So this isn't too bad to see here. So yeah, it looks like the writes will uh, vary a bit, but they're hovering in the 300 to 400 megabyte range. Now, a little bit earlier on my gaming PC upstairs, we tested the uh, random read and write performance of the internal SSD. Uh, we'll put that uh, result up right now from the Crystal Disk Mark test. It actually does very well. You can see here on the multi-threaded tests that uh, it is writing and reading at a pretty high rate of speed here, really performing quite nicely, even compared to some of the more premium solid state drives that I have reviewed here on the channel. So overall, a very solid uh, solid state drive installed on this device that is really performing nicely for the price point here. And it's nice to have all of that packaged up in a single unit here that delivers a lot of additional functionality. So I was very pleased with that. Uh, they do not recommend opening it up. I did try to pull off the uh, little feet here to see if there was a uh, screw that I could access to maybe swap out that SSD. I believe it's just an M2 drive inside of it, uh, but they said it's all kind of glued together, and if you do take it apart, you'll likely risk damaging it. Uh, if you want to give it a shot, you probably could swap it out for a larger drive, but uh, it's really not designed to be taken apart. Now, I have noticed some irregularities on the USB ports connected to the device here. So what I'm going to do real quick uh, is without the video connected, uh, we're going to attach a WD 
SSD. This drive is a USB-C solid state drive that should perform about the same speed as what we saw out of the Minix's internal drive. So let's just connect it up real quick and run that test here and see what we get. So I'm just gonna connect it up here to the first port. I'm going to go over to my speed test and select that WD drive after it mounts itself. And we'll go ahead and do that. The other drive should mount here in a second. And if I connect it up and start the test, uh, you'll see that we're getting somewhat similar speeds here. It's running definitely slower than it does when I have it plugged in directly into this MacBook. Uh, so the write speeds are all over the place. The reads are a little bit more consistent, running here at about the same rate of speed we saw out of the internal Minix drive. But if I connect up video now and disconnect the drive and then reconnect it, we're going to see a very different story here. So let's plug in video to get the uh, video running back to my uh, video system here. We'll wait for that to flip over and then I will connect up the uh, USB drive here again. And then what I'm gonna do is load up the Blackmagic test once more, and we have it pointing at the same drive. We'll wait for it to mount here, and we'll run it again. And I think we might see a different speed now. And yeah, so you can see now that it's kind of dipped back down to USB 2.0 speeds. And I think if you have uh, video connected to it first, it's going to run these two USB devices at USB 2.0 speed versus USB 3.0 speed. I've seen this before on a few other docs that I have tested, and it must have something to do with the bandwidth it's sharing uh, to output the video. And if we take it a step further here and go into the Mac system report, uh, we'll see that it is attaching that My Passport drive to a USB 2.0 hub and the most we're getting out of that hub, if we go up to the top here, is 480 megabits per second. When I have it connected without video, it actually puts it under this USB 3.0 hub. Uh, the good news, though, is that the internal drive is not impacted by this. It always shows up under that USB 3 hub, but it must have some bandwidth issues related to these USB ports. So if you are connecting video, the likelihood here is that you'll be running these two ports at USB 2.0 speed and not 3.0 speed, despite the fact that the box here says those are indeed USB 3 ports. Uh, they will be USB 3 when you've got no video connected, but if you do, they're going to run slower. All right, so let's do a little lightning round here and see how it works with non-Apple devices. Uh, so we've got a Surface Go tablet, which also only has a single USB port. We're gonna look and see if the HDMI output works along with power delivery, uh, the internal storage, and of course the Logitech dongle here. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Uh, so it looks like we are charging down there in the corner. Uh, the Neo storage here is popped up and it looks as though my uh, mouse is working here. I copied a video file over, so we'll go ahead and play that off the internal drive real quick and make sure that works. And it looks like it is, at least on the uh, internal display here. Let's just drag it over there. Yep, it looks like all is good there. So I think this will work fine on Windows devices that support USB-C. Earlier I did test out that USB problem we had on the Mac. It is also doing the same thing here. So that drive was showing up as a USB 2.0 device when I did have video connected and it was properly in the USB 3.0 mode when video was not connected. All right, let's take a look now at an iPad. All right, let's take a look at my iPad Pro. Uh, the iPad Pros have a USB-C connector and not Apple's proprietary lightning connector. Most iOS devices, including iPhones and non-pro iPads, do not support this device. But if your iPad has USB-C, then this will do what you're about to see here. So we've got it plugged in. Power is going in now, so that is good. Let's see if we get display out. Yes, we've got display out. So, so far we have uh, power in, display out. Let's test the USB here with the keyboard. That is working, so that's good. iPads do not support mice, so you're not going to see any mouse pointer running here on screen, but if they ever do, I would suspect that it works. And one of the neat things about iOS 13 or iPad OS for the iPad is that they now support external storage. And sure enough, the built-in drive on the hub is showing up. I've got a video here that we had copied over from the Mac a little bit earlier, and there you go. It's playing here on the iPad just like it did on the Surface tablet, so that is cool to see. So it looks like this is fully functional on the iPad running iPad OS or iOS 13 if your device has a USB-C port. 
Uh, now we're going to try an Android phone. This is a Galaxy S8 from Samsung that I got in from them on loan a little while ago. I got to get this back to them at some point. Uh, this does have a USB-C output, uh, which supports video out in some of the other tests that we've done with it. Let's see how it fares with the hub. All right, so we have the phone here ready to go. We're going to plug in the hub now into the bottom of the phone where its USB-C port is. Uh, it is getting power now, so it is charging off of that USB connector there. And it looks like now we've got video working, so that's good. And let's jump over to Samsung Notes here and uh, maybe just use the keyboard and start typing out some stuff. And sure enough, that is working. And the mouse is working too, so that's pretty cool. You can see the mouse here moving on screen. And that's because Android supports mice. And if we jump back out here, let's go over to uh, the uh, file manager and see if we can see that built-in storage. And sure enough here, you can see the USB storage on the Minix hub here. So let's load that up real quick and we can see some of the files on there. Uh, now I do have the video that we copied over from the Mac a little bit earlier, but it looks like this app has a hard time getting that video to play back. So it's been uh, spinning here as I've been testing things, but it looks like you probably should be able to move files back and forth. I think this might be just an app compatibility issue with the uh, media file that we're trying to play back. But overall, it looks like if your phone supports uh, USB-C fully, uh, you'll be able to gain access to the features of this hub. Now on Android, you definitely want to check with your phone manufacturer to see what the compatibility is with the USB-C port that you have. My Pixel 3a phone, for example, does not support video output through the HDMI, but the other features do work. So every phone will probably have different compatibility, but at least with the Samsung phone, you can see what we've been able to do here. And I think other Samsung phones uh, should perform the same. And you can see now that video has started to play back as well. So all is good uh, for Android, for iPad, for Windows, and for the Mac. So pretty good stuff here, uh, minus the USB issue. And it looks like Minix may have a Pro Edition on the way that incorporates Gigabit Ethernet in addition to the other features that we see on this one. I'm eager to try that one out when it's released, and we'll probably get one in and see how it performs. I'm concerned about the performance of that Gigabit Ethernet when you do have video attached. So we'll see if it has the same kind of performance penalties we are seeing right now with the USB ports on this edition. Uh, that's my only big gripe here is I don't think they made it clear enough that you'll see a performance degradation when video is attached, at least for those two USB ports. Uh, that should have been made more clear in the product packaging and in the manual, uh, but nonetheless, it's still pretty useful, I think, especially given that you don't see a performance hit on the SSD when video is attached, and it is very useful to have storage plus the ports available along with power delivery uh, for phones, tablets, and other Ultrabooks that are very limited in the number of ports that they have. So uh, on balance, it's a good product. I just wish they were a little bit more clear about those USB ports. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.